I would say if we're going to err, we're going to err on the side of practice. Um, but, you know, there's so many things in, in life, and we in the Western world have a hard time with this, where there is a yin and a yang. And all practice with no theory can be deadening, but all theory with no practice can be just totally irrelevant. So I think the job of any good institution is to hold those two con contradictory things in balance and say, yes, you need to, you need to do your, your harmony classes, your theory classes, your ear training classes. You need to learn to write a fugue, even though you're, you're not intending to be a film composer or a classical composer. These things are tools that will help you be a better musician and understand music and unleash whatever talents you have more effectively. So we need to emphasize the theory part. And to the typical Berkeley student, that's a little bit of a hard sell because they're here to play. They want to play eight hours a day, and then they want to go out and have a gig that night, and then they want to come back and practice all, you know, till four in the morning, uh, which is great. But I also think that if, if that's all you do, you don't develop as well. There really are some things that you can do away from your instrument that can help you become a better musician. Uh, having come from the world of virtually all practice and no theory, <laughs> I, th I think I'm living proof of how limited you, 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 you cause yourself to be when you don't make that leap. I mean, it's interesting to me to see um, some of the people who've come out of Berkeley, uh, you know, a, a good example I think is an Alan Silvestri, who was a rock and roll musician who came to Berkeley and his goal was to be a rock and roll musician. But he got a big break and started scoring movies, and he just, you know, he did Forrest Gump, he did Back to the Future, he's doing this Beowulf movie now. He's calling on skills he never would have imagined he would use. If he had been at Berkeley and said, look, I'm just a rock and roll musician, I don't want to, I want to learn all this stuff, how could, he, how could he compose the music he's composed for these amazing films he's done? So part of our ch challenge, I think, is to get the young 20-year-old, you know, person who's got this, this incredibly... Uh, focused, laser-like goal and say, that's, that's cool, we're going to support you in that, but you also are here to kind of open your mind and open your ears to new things you haven't heard before, things you haven't considered doing before, so that when you go out there you'll have a toolkit that serves you well. Um, you know, a lot of, I'm a, I'm a drummer, a lot of Berkeley drummers are, are distinguished by the fact that they're musical directors. They actually, they know enough about music to think about the melodic side of the, of, of the music and the business side of the music. And uh, it's pretty rare to find drummers in, in an MD role because most of them just don't have the chops in, in other arenas. I heard a great clinician here say, uh, better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. <laughs>